Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Tim Riker and this is my name sign. It's a T on the forehead. I'm a senior lecturer here at Brown University. We are excited today to host this event. First, I'll give a little bit of background of who I am. I'm wearing a black shirt. It's a button down shirt with a collar. I'm a white male with a beard and a goatee. My hair is combed over. Today our topic is Deaf Community, Are You Ready for AI? We have several wonderful panelists today. Our goal is to get a pulse on the community and what your views are on AI. As far as ASL interpreting, what that looks like, what we vision for the future, and what the future holds. So we hope that this will be a rousing conversation and I would like to turn it over to each panelist who is joining us this evening to introduce themselves. They'll give a background of who they are, give their description, and then we'll go ahead and start the discussion. I'll turn it over. Who would like to go first? Erin? Hi, everyone. Yes, my name is Erin Sander Sigmund, and this is my name sign. I am involved in Safe AI. I am on the advisory group, as well as I work as a deaf interpreter. I am from a rural area in Vermont, and I'm excited to be here tonight as part of this discussion. We'll turn it over to Jillian, if you want. Sure, absolutely. Hi everyone, this is Jillian Forschner. I work at a deaf school. I teach level one deaf kids as well as work at the ASL university level, teaching there as well. Is there anything else I was supposed to add? Hi, my name is Yol Bulos-Galos. I'm a student here at RIT majoring in engineering I have curly hair and I'm wearing a blue polo. I have my ears pierced and I have light facial hair. I'm sorry, this is Erin. I wanted to add my image description. I am a black female. I have a black headband on. I've got red hair. My shirt is black and I have a blue background. I also have some dangly earrings on. They look like books. I'm also involved with the interpreting organization Mano y Mano, a trilingual organization. This is Jillian. I do want to add my image description. My background is a brown wall. I've got kind of brown and gray mixed in my hair, which is pulled up in a bun. I have on a black t-shirt that's short sleeves. Steph, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, this is Steph. I'm so thankful that you are all joining us here this evening. I'm excited to have these panelists and these guests with us and Tim moderating. I'm a white female. I have very short gray hair. It's a salt and pepper gray. I also have glasses, a green shirt, and a black background. This evening, for the next 45 to 50 minutes, we're going to be having an open discussion regarding an introductory level. Not an in-depth conversation, but more taking a pulse on what our panelists feel and what they've seen chatting about with their friends. What they're excited about, what they're worried about, to get a wide range of emotions and topics in regards to AI. Do you think it will impact the deaf community? Do you think it should go away? Do you think it's going to be here to stay? We really want to have this open conversation and see what comes of it. Erin, Tim, and I are all a part of a task force that is wanting to propose within the next six months or four to six months, a proposal for law that will regulate AI interpreting.
The point of this webinar is to open the door to learn people's opinions and invite these conversations to explore where should AI be limited, where should AI be taken advantage of and used. This is that beginning, opening the door, that beginning conversation. Most of our discussion today will be between Yoel, Aaron, and Jillian. Tim is more of a background person as a moderator. We're gonna be talking about AI interpreting, and we do have interpreters here voicing, but you might not be able to see the interpreters. But if you are hearing, you'll be able to hear them. You can also look at the closed captions as needed. We have caught happening at the same time. I would like to add as well that our goal for today is a general pulse taking to see where we're at. In the next couple of weeks, we'll develop some research, ask more questions to the community, and gather your inputs and attitudes towards AI. In order to help improve our understanding, so in the future, when we do recommend this law or propose a law, we have the community's input, not just um, spoken language and hearing interpreter input, but actual sign language input as well. That's our goal for today. This leads us to our first question for our panelists. What have you seen already? What experiences, what preferences? How have you used AI in terms of sign language interpreting? Have you seen it? Have you used it? What has your experience looked like? What has it been? If you could just go into a little bit about that. Whoever wants to go first, we'll open up the floor. Yoel? Yes, I'll go first again. As mentioned, my name is Yoel, and really my experience has been a little diverse. Seeing sign language interpreters being added in the AI realm, I definitely see it, and I see it as a new technology, and it's gonna be taking off. The concern that I'm having right now in regards to AI interpreters is I personally have not used it myself, but I have a feeling it's forthcoming. It's coming any day now. I'm wondering if anybody else here has actually used it. Yes, I have seen it. There's some related to ASL work popping up, some videos that we've seen come out, some avatars who use sign language and have facial expressions, the gestures, all of that, which is, well, I'm interested. They're using the signs, but I haven't seen interpreting yet. There's some different areas we've seen, some kids' video stories with signing. I could have seen that so far. As far as the avatars, do they have facial expressions? Are they yes, able to clearly display bit. that? A little bit. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. You know they have some mouth morphemes, some non-manual movements with the mouth. Yes, I am seeing that included. You mentioned storytelling and the avatars having facial expressions. As far as their appearance and physical features, like having glasses or diverse hairstyles, skin tones, what do they look like? It almost looks like a cartoon person. You can see the face, they've got the nose, the eyes. You can adjust that to look like an actual person that you're trying to represent. Sort of like you're cloning the person. You can make that and send it to a text or a message. Yeah, it will sign and it matches pretty well. So is it like an everyday thing, like going to an ATM? Would there be an avatar there speaking for us? That kind of thing? Where if you have to go to a teller and get money out, there would be an avatar there giving an interpretation back and forth? I feel that relying on AI in the future is a little worrisome. I think with the cultural relevance that is needed with interpreting, it's concerning whether they will understand, be able to convey it accurately. I wonder, especially in regards to errors, omissions, and interpreting, if that would cause an issue. Exactly. This is Erin. I'm wondering, when talking to an ATM, because I'm worried about the security aspects of it, uh, I'm already on camera, right? Now I'm going to be signing to this camera. I put my card in right there as far as identity theft. What are your feelings about that? As far as the idea of the ATM, 
I've heard about something like that coming out. About two years ago, I saw a place that had come up with that new technology where the avatar was interpreting at the ATM. If they needed somebody who spoke that language, then they would. I was like, I can't even imagine needing to have an avatar in that circumstance. But you know, like having access to the information is important too. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that, especially like with VP connection to a VP and that kind of thing. I do find it very interesting trying to imagine myself going into a situation like an ATM and pulling it up and realizing, oh, what are the options? What are the variety of things that I can choose from? Is that all accessible? Are they signing all of that? Because typically in English, I see that. I see it in Spanish. I see it in different languages that are available. But choosing ASL or choosing sign, I think would be the first time using it. I would be a little bit nervous about that, uh, un like unsure of the process. How would that, what would that look like? What would educating the public look like? What would that be about? Yeah, and what if, like I can only imagine, if you meant to withdraw money and you accidentally withdraw $5,000, I think that might be a huge issue in the interpreting process. They need to accurately make sure the information is correct. So moving on, as far as AI, keeping that in mind, where we're at right now with what you've seen, and what you've experienced so far, maybe what you've heard, what you've seen in the news and social media, what do you think of it? What do you think we could do now? I want to clarify with AI and what it can do. Do you mean right now as related to interpreting or AI in general? Yeah, we've seen what it can do, but as far as AI and interpreting, what do you think AI is for in the coming months, years, as far as AI? What is it? What do you think it's able to do? What we on the brink of? I can respond to that. I know for AI, a lot of it depends on what data they have available. So my understanding is what signs are available? What data do they have on this? And with that data, where does that data come from? If you're building this AI based on that signing and language, it's so complex to get the full complete understanding of what is there. You know what I mean? I'm not sure if the AI would understand me or if it would understand the AI, especially if it was a really complex situation, like Aaron mentioned. If it is a really complex situation and you're depending on sign language and the language data that is available, well, what happens if the data is not there? Going as far as the interpreting with AI based on the information provided by the data that's available. Go ahead, Aaron. Okay, sure. So my first thought, okay, before I start thinking about AI related to signing, I was thinking of the basic AI that we're already seeing and the general uses of it, where People are looking at it. Some people like it. Some people see it as a robot. For instance, Chapcha, when you click on it, it provides an image uh, to access information before you go into specific locations, such as a particular site, the bus, that type of thing. Taking pictures. You're clicking around a touchscreen full of bugs and then snap, it's taken your identity. The system has your information then it becomes something else. I was locked in that frame of technology. When I think of how that would apply to interpreting, well, it could go anywhere, but I do think language is complex. How we learn to navigate that system. I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago looking back, back on how AI happens. It's visually record something. Okay, fine, maybe it'll keep developing indefinitely. Or an app, there is one apparently. I was told the name of it, needs some research on that. The basic concept of this app is non-signers who want to communicate with a deaf person who signs, who is, is widely fine. The hearing person, the speaker, can talk into the phone 
turn it around and show the AI. That's what Jillian told us about the signing children's stories. It's the same concept. Words and sentences are changed by the AI into signing. That deaf person was not non-pulsed. What a roadblock. Is that deaf person going to be able to respond back? Take any signing deaf person. Are you going to just sign into a camera? That camera is going to record you. And then there's an audio recording to the hearing person like Siri. What all is going on? What, what if you hit that roadblock? Where is your breaking point? If the communication is only one way, there's a lot of food for thought. What do you two think of it? Well, this is Yoel. I completely agree with you. Um, it's definitely one way. Um, I'm not sure if the, the AI person or avatar is going to understand my emotions or maybe one facial expression might derail the entire message. Yes, if they're able to record the sign language and there's a fine nuance of facial expression, it reads wrong, the communication can collapse. That's a scary thought. What if you're in a medical environment, a legal setting, in court? That seems very sensitive. There's so much uncertainty. Interpret the question, okay, what about the answer? That's murky. There's so much to consider, we really have to use our imaginations. There's a lot of scenarios it could impact. You know how interpreters ask us for clarification? Like, what does that mean? What does this mean? Will the AI ask for clarification? What about gestures? Will it understand? Will it know if it's wrong or right? I think that's years and years of modeling and data. Years of modeling and lots of data. That leads to my next question. Using today's technology and where AI is, right now, as far as interpreting, you know AI is definitely new. We're not in a place to start using interpreting in the AI realm. If you could envision the perfect world, what would that look like for AI interpreting? How do we see it? What would it look like? How would it benefit the deaf community? You know, what kind of things could we definitely use AI interpreting for? This is Aaron signing. Answering Tim's trick question, what could we see in a perfect world? Oftentimes we wish for this ideal world, but we've never had it. It's never arrived. We can dream it. You know we wish for world peace. That's definitely something we want. We could wish for world peace in AI. For sure I think it's a perfect world, but it must be multilingual. Plural lingual. There is a vast variety of signed languages. So many different languages. We must all be included holistically. The entire deaf community must be involved. There are regional signs, inherited generational signs. Definitely so many different factors. Only a few samples are insufficient. We need a massive contribution of deaf people around the world contributing to these data sets. We can't do it without each other. That's impossible. Erin, I want to add, when we're considering the deaf community, this includes deaf children. They are learning the language, they play with the language. AI has to recognize this. They invent new signs that work just for them, signs that suit their setting. AI has to recognize this too. I'm thinking about math and the precision required with how we use numbers. In science, whenever you make something, it doesn't always work the first time. As an RIT student, I see this repeatedly. Is AI perfect? I doubt it. We can strive for an ideal goal and see how it works out. Go ahead, Jillian. 
Are we imagining AI as a robot? Or as a hologram that materializes and begins signing? Is it 2D or 3D? This influences the possibilities. It's also concerning whether it's user-friendly or not. Is the touch screen easy to navigate? Does it require spelling? And age has to be considered. How will older generations learn the technology? Deafblind as well. Yep, deafblind also. You read my mind. It's such a challenge. How? How do we include this deaf capacity? Can AI work with Braille? And morph it into something? That would be an incredible feature. Thinking about perfection, in a utopia, you would want to ensure they have access to this as well. That's important. Geography. Thinking about places people live, rural areas with limited access. What does that look like? And cost. Y'all, yes, exactly. One of my concerns is if they're dependent on Wi-Fi. If they don't have the best Wi-Fi, what happens if they don't have access to Wi-Fi? If they're dependent on it, or if they're in rural areas or the mountains, lost in the middle of nowhere, and they need to communicate with someone, is the technology going to work? Is it going to be obsolete, worthless? It's hard to envision what the technology is going to actually look like, but maybe there are situations where currently you're not getting access, where you wish you would have access, prompt, efficient, quick access, where AI could fill in the gap. What do you guys think? Where would that be? I mentioned the ATM. That would be nice, you know. If you want $5,000, I could just walk up, sign to the AI, and $5,000 would come out. But it may not be perfect. But for daily use, if you were going to the hospital, if you had a doctor's appointment and needed to communicate directly, they would have that technology available. To me, that would be great. But again, I'm hesitant. I don't want to say that because I don't want someone to take the idea and run with it, thinking that is what everybody wants. When I think about AI in the classroom, I don't think it's a good idea or good fit. Maybe there are some benefits with simple things. It depends on what we're talking about. Maybe for kids' story time, but for complex topics, uh, an hour of watching an animated or robotic shape doing interpretations? Nope. People will check out. Deaf kids will disengage. They're not going to watch that. It's not a good language model for them. The communication will totally break down. What if children learn to be like the AI? thinking, oh, I need to sign like that. How will that impact cognitive development? I think about this, these children with technology. It's taken off. It's more than it used to be, more than we ever experienced. For children, it will continue to change. They adapt to the world that they live in and easily pick it up. For us who are older, it's a struggle to constantly adapt to these new things. Children, they're young. They're going to pick it up fast. Not all of them, depending on their group. I'm thinking about giving a kid an iPhone. They will engage the iPhone. Previous generations are completely different. They did not have that technology. They did not have access to it. So that's something to consider. Absolutely. Putting AI into schools? Ugh. It's so important to have a physical language model. You have to have that. Oh, sorry, Tim. An interpreter, as far as the emotions that are required in schools, is that also what you're saying? That you need a live person? So think about your everyday life, where you go, where you have to use a pen and paper to communicate with somebody or your phone to type a message. What if you could just sign? your question to them. You didn't have to pull out that piece of paper. You didn't have to pull out your phone. What would AI look like in those situations? Where would that be? In the airport, international airports, if I could pull up my phone, select my destination, sign to the phone, 
and then it would translate my signing to their general signs? That's an idea to consider. Every time I think of SVRS or the InTouch Convo app, maybe I could try it to use AI. Maybe I'm calling a family member or maybe that's where I would use it. I don't know. Like family member conversations, just to have a quick conversation with somebody. I'm thinking about holidays, family gatherings, where family members don't know sign language. They might be the only deaf person in a hearing family. Pulling that in might be an interesting addition. First, I balk a bit, but that's kind of the starting process of how we would use AI. And just can you imagine the AI becoming a substitute for a human replacing human contact? That's unsettling. Like, mm, uh, okay. I get it. Interpreters speak for me and emit my tone that I'm trying to express. I don't think the AI is going to be able to do that. Yes, I do agree. We can't have it substituting for a person. Thinking about one of my graduate school professors who said avatars might just go ahead and replace all of us. We'll replace the teachers, replace everything. And like, that's a big decision. In 70 years, is that going to be what everything looks like? Yeah, it's unsettling to think that we could be headed this direction. Hearing people can't decide for us, but they decide things for us all the time. They say, here you go, use this. And then they walk away. We have to say, no, 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 this is more complex, especially in this area. What if you're right? What if AI becomes equal to humans? How would we use AI then as far as interpreting? Answer your question. One of my professors here in computer science was talking about AI. They said AI is only about word prediction. If you're writing a text, it can predict which word you're going to type next. Using that, they might take over for us, trying to predict an answer for us. Maybe that would be applied in everyday life. That's scary. Wow. That's definitely food for thought. If we're using it, say, at a library, I'm doing research and it can dig in. I'm trying to find this history going all the way back. Oh my gosh, trying to see where it all started from. There's a lot of different things that AI could be used for. If I can't imagine it, then it could happen, right? You can believe it, you can dream it, you can achieve it. Sorry, Tim. There are things that seem impossible to think about, but we keep discovering new things, like Moore's Law, for example. Things that we thought were impossible. But with time, there are new findings from research and how we'd be using that research. Yeah, so you can envision it. What would you want it to look like? What would the perfect world look like if we could solve any problem, if AI truly did become human quality? What would that look like? I'm sorry, can you clarify what you mean? Yeah, talking about, like, how would you use AI? How would you use it to access communication? What would your dream world look like? The word that I'm thinking of is equitable. Equitable. And sustainable. Making sure that growth and deployment are seeds that we can modify in ongoing ways. There's control and management of it within our community, including the full span of diversity through the generations. Adding to that where we need access on demand, like being able to pull it up on a screen instead of having to wait a while while the search happens for an interpreter, I think that would be one of the benefits, being available on demand. 
How about maybe using it to buy a car? Enter a dealership and say, let's go. Bring AI in there. Oh my gosh, are you talking about this dashboard in the vehicle? Giving you directions? You veered left, now right, now you're over the speed limit. Getting lost in the AI. Or let it drive itself. Two hands on the steering wheel. Sign to it where to go. That leads to the next question. What are you hesitant about, uneasy about? What is your gut telling you based on the assumptions that we have experienced in our history? Where could this lead us down the wrong path with AI and cause more barriers and more disruption to the deaf community in a way that we wouldn't want, that we wouldn't expect? Can you give us an example of that? I just need to make a quick comment on that because it's hard to imagine. The reason is because of these Hollywood movies. You've got these robots and they destroy the world. We see that all the time. You know what I'm talking about. There's so many movies that have this example. All of them have negative outcomes. That makes me feel like I should be resistant to this. It makes it harder to set aside my resistance and say what is positive, what is good, because I look at all of these future representations and they all show, oh, it's going to be negative. Then you see other views saying, oh, no, let's go with this. It's going to be great. Move forward. I'm wondering about the technology that we've had in the past. Has any of the technologies been bad for the deaf community? I can't think of any. Should we resist or let AI continue and see where it leads? AI interpreting? Let's see. Well, deaf clubs have dwindled over the years, shutting down those social interactions like deaf night out. Other events have replaced deaf clubs. There's pros and cons, definitely an impact. I'm pondering. My resistance, open-mindedness, curiosity, trying to keep an open mind as well as stay informed. Data. Today we are dependent on data. Are we ready to talk about our identity? The scams? Where are they taking my information? How are they using my personal information? Can somebody take my identity from me? What about AI? What is AI doing? There are a lot of different algorithms. What are they taking from me that is needed for you to be able to access things that you need in your world? Like simple everyday things. AI takes it. Where is the data being stored? How is it being used? How is it being labeled? What is it looking at? Maybe I'm overthinking this, but just food for thought. More stuff to think about. Oh yeah, Yoel, your privacy and security. How can you protect yourself? Obviously, this is developing with AI. And we need to consider all of it within our brainstorming. How to resolve this? That's definitely a piece of the pie. Yuel, did you want to add something? Yes. As far as AI being able to steal your information, what information and privacy is protected? If you go into a bank or have a confidential conversation with the government or with your doctor, how do you trust this? How do you trust any algorithm? You see the interpreter with your own eyes. When the interpreting ends, we leave. The interpreter doesn't memorize your information. I prefer this. It's a confidentiality thing. I know that a live interpreter has its benefits and its perks. AI has benefits too. It's quick. And I have these concerns as well. Okay, well, uh, bringing up the concept of trust, trusting a human person. If I bring in a human person to interpret, do we expect them to maintain their confidentiality? But an avatar, you give them that information and the avatar disappears. I can answer. I know that interpreters, they're bound by their code of ethics. They've gone through three or four years of school and training. 
they're certified. So that's where I put my trust. Not everyone, of course. They are human after all. But a machine, how are they designed to be bad? How will they use our information? Are they guaranteed to use the information and to use it in a bad way? That trust. Can you trust everyone? Absolutely not. They could take that information and steal your identity. That's something that needs to be considered. Anybody could use this information for the wrong purpose. I'm sure all of us have interpreter horror stories that we've experienced. I have a variety of experiences with non-ethical interpreters who broke the code of conduct. It depends so much on the person. You always hope that the deaf person will have a good experience and the interpreter will follow those ethics. Thinking about the future, hopefully we have a better code of ethics and it would be even more strict and more protective, more confidentiality than we have now. I have trauma from some of those. That's always in the back of my head. Y'all, go ahead. You are talking about a person. There are rules that they have to follow. There are consequences for that. But as far as we know, that information, once it's in the interwebs, it can be disseminated so quickly. Absolutely. Absolutely so true. algorithms. The algorithms disappear too. Like Tim was talking about, a person you can trust, they're not going to take that information and confidence, but with algorithms, it vanishes. Yet nothing on the internet disappears, right? It doesn't evaporate into air. Time continues. This becomes more complex. The algorithm shapes our future. It's behind the scenes, behind the guarantee. So who's controlling that? Who do we trust? You have no name, you have no face to trust. Do we believe that it actually evaporates into air? That goes into Yoel's comment about having access to the information, talking to the bank about confidential information. Whose screen are we all looking at? Am I showing them my information and then I leave? I take my information. They aren't supposed to keep it. But what is it connected to? There's all these things, a computer versus a human. There's no right or wrong. I'm just trying to keep an open mind. The human interpreter has to follow the professional code of conduct and their code of ethics. Sometimes there are gray lines, the codes are guidelines, but there are those gray areas that there are boundaries, clear black and white delineations. Can you fit those rules into AI, into the algorithm, to increase that trust in order to feel more trust? That they are also following a code of ethics. Is that something that we can establish in AI to make it safer? I'll respond to that. I think it's really complicated. What I've seen through media, the news, companies have approached Congress, asked questions about applying rules in AI. Many companies are resistant to that, but I think we need laws to manage that. Because without law, it's going to get worse. Definitely without algorithmic surveillance. Who's going to supervise this? Who will be responsible? It balloons, becoming such a complex topic. You know, the three or five of us that are here today, I think we can have a conversation about deaf concerns and AI and future potential issues that we can address. We need to generate this on a large consensus, how to go through this process together. Definitely. I think it's going to take forever. Me too. You're thinking the same thing as me. Processing, brainstorming, coming to agreement, is that accessible? Consensus? What is that? We are going to take the code of ethics and just put it in there? Who's going to monitor it? Who holds that accountability when it spirals out of control? 
how? Again, the information doesn't just disappear. I sign a contract and my information doesn't disappear. I know I am perseverating on AI stealing my account. How can we get a guarantee? Where is this information kept? Is there a backup server? Talking about being equitable and trying to keep it sustainable. As of right now, having the human interpreter, do you see AI becoming more and more prevalent? Is it going to be able to instill this equity more than a human could? Or will it make the equity situation worse? Um, I think it could go either way, case by case. If we're thinking about, oh, this is the best, exactly what we want. But that, that could backfire and escalate out of control. One minor glitch and it's over. Take Zoom, current technology, it freezes periodically. A slight freeze at a nuanced moment and that could throw off the communication. Take non-manual signs, uh, that could cause offense. Now you need clarification. Can AI provide that clarification? I doubt in my lifetime. Perhaps for our children, for future families, it will be pervasive, possibly, but its legacy into the future from now, how does that sustain? We can expect and anticipate that AI has the potential to morph and magnify into something beautiful without barriers. Adding to that, as far as AI is concerned, we could eliminate cost of interpreters, paying for gas, travel time, so it might be a benefit to not having to pay so much, and it will be better for the environment. But do our concerns outweigh those benefits? Is it worth it to save fuel cost? Weighing the pros and cons, what do you think? I was thinking while watching you about technology changing. Sometimes technology changes overnight. I mean, figure of speech there, but if we have AI set in place, and then two days later, we're suddenly switching to something entirely different, and then income changes, and people's jobs and their careers are entirely overwhelmed with AI, well, that's a big change. Also, technology can be expensive. Those changes can happen really fast. We really have to take that into consideration. I'm curious, maybe AI becoming more expensive and that trumps the human interpreter? Or maybe deaf people benefit more economically. Would that solve the equity gap? What do we think that would look like? Suppose I'm doing a dangerous activity like rock climbing and suddenly I need an interpreter. Would that be more expensive than a live human? I don't know. It's really difficult to answer. It would depend. That is stunning. My mind is almost in shock. I am surprised and wondering who is AI for? The community? the underserved or the underrepresented? There is a famous quote, no one size fits all. For interpreters, AI won't fit all. Technology doesn't have a one size fit all. What about deaf elders and 
grassroot deaf who need signs instead of finger spelling. Or maybe they are fascinated by the shape of a touch screen and put off by what comes up when they click on it. There's a palette of colors. How does someone analyze and navigate that? Especially the youth. The children are already immersed. It's commonplace for them to play with a touch screen and record themselves. The children are teaching us. You know the TV show Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? That's where things are going. The possibilities are endless. That's why the goal has to be sustainability. Because of the expansion, continual expansion, to include everyone in the future, all of us, all of us matter. Jillian, or maybe Yoel, do you have a response? Anything you want to add? I think Aaron summarized it correctly. Where we are at now, seeing the technology grow, seeing how many people use it, and the future generations too. Not only our current generation, but for generations to come. How we use AI and the decisions we make now are going to impact the experience that they have for the future. So it's very important for human sustainability. Sustainability is key for our planet. Jillian, did you want to add anything? No, not at this time. I think it got covered. I'm just thinking now. Steph, how much time do we have left? It looks like it's 7.50 my time. We're doing good. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes left. Should we continue this dialogue more? Well, you all have been chatting away and it's been amazing. I've been following the Q&A. Oh my goodness. There are so many questions coming in and great comments and important points. Many are agreeing with your comments and what you've been adding and they want to add expansions. It's just phenomenal. I cannot wait to share this list of questions and comments with everyone. When we get it all figured out at the end. I think one question that would be important for us to backtrack to is, what is AI? The English is artificial intelligence. And we've been signing the acronym AI, but what is that? I know we don't want to go deep into the technological answer, but can we explain a little bit of the basics? Maybe an introduction of what AI even means. Tim? I don't mind giving an introduction unless somebody else has a wants to go into it. Tim, go for it. The spotlight is on you. All right. Well, I will turn it over to you all because this is his major. No, it is not my major, but I can answer. How people understand it is that basically it's computer generated. The computer applies an algorithm to generate an output in response to your question or comment. The machine is doing the work for us. With simple terms. It's a computer. That means we have to tell it what to do. We feed it. It calculates and then gives us a response. We tell it repeatedly what response we want, and it learns through controlled turn taking as artificial intelligence. That means it's learning our thought process, our abilities to see, feel, smell, taste, and those different real world experiences. And we're feeding it into the computer so AI can experience it and do its own machine learning. Now when you ask a question, 
it gives a more creative, more humanistic response or output. The point is, we feed it data. We feed it different inputs from the world, and then we tell it what to give it back to us, which is almost equivalent to human. It could very well surpass human in the future. Maybe you have a better way of answering that, Steph. I don't think I have a better way, but I think it's important to understand the implications of AI. AI itself is not magic. AI really needs to follow very strict rules. It's all within math and statistics and pattern recognition. The way that happens is it requires a heavy dependence on data. It's not like you can feed it 10 signs and it will become fluent and skilled in those signs. So what we're seeing now with spoken language interpreting, people can take turns really quickly. With written languages, turn taken across the languages happens fast. Because spoken languages and written languages have so many data points involved. AI has read the whole internet. It's listened to every movie in history. It has all of this knowledge in the background, but AI hasn't seen gestures and it hasn't seen signs very much. So sign language with AI is far behind compared to spoken languages. That's why this conversation is extremely important. It's important to figure out what we want, what we want to prevent, how we want this to develop, and if we decide that we want to do it, then the deaf community should absolutely be the ones who are investing in this, being involved in the research, providing videos that would be fed into the AI. To add that data for AI to draw from and to quote unquote learn from it. If deaf don't want AI, then that's absolutely fine. Some companies will continue figuring it out. Eventually it will catch up. How soon that would be is really hard to tell. Um, but what motivates this discussion is for the deaf community and signers to decide. Do we want this? Do we want to help AI catch up with what is in the hearing world now? This discussion is really diving into that. This is only our very first open forum discussion about the future of AI. Is the deaf community ready? I'm wondering, what is our sense from this? Are we actually ready? How do you feel about that? Are we ready? Yes, no, maybe we don't know yet. After this hour of conversation and what Steph just said, I get the sense of we can't put this off any longer. It's coming, right? Staying behind hearing people, they will create a technology that takes over our language. We need to get caught up. We need to get on track with our own goals and what we want to see from them. What do you guys think? Let me play devil's advocate. Talking about catching up with the hearing, because that's ironic. Because I think the deaf are already ahead and the hearing world doesn't even know it. We're already functioning in a hearing world. There are undiscovered creations which we need to do the research to find out. Imagine seeking and finding amazing capacities that the deaf people already have. This possibility has not even been cracked. Where is this realization? Again, this is equitability. Does catching up imply equality? Who knows?
knows? We don't. We don't know. This is our first meeting. It's a reference point. I'm excited to see where this goes, what this brings to the table. We'll have to see what happens next. Time will tell. Time is strange. Time stops for no one. Time continues whether we like it or not. We'll continue to live and see how we stand. Jillian, do you think we're ready? Uh, I think half and half. I mean, it really depends on the situation. There are so many things that have to be taken into consideration. It's so heavy. 100% ready. I think maybe some of us, maybe we will be, but others are not. Definitely. I agree with you. We've come to the top of our hour. I want to thank everybody in the audience for attending our first discussion about AI and interpreting. How to navigate this, how this impacts our communities. Now we're going to wrap up the session, but want to remind everyone that we will have a second and third webinar. The next one is in October on the 30th, not on Halloween. It's the day before Monday, October 30th, at the same time at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can register through Eventbrite. The third session will be on November 6th. It's also on a Monday, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully you all continue to follow along in our journey and conversation uh, and as we investigate this new world. No, this is beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, wonderful. Have a good evening, everybody. Good night. Bye. Have a good night.